the next to that. Hey, sit down. I seek refuge in the Lord of the people, the King of the people, the God of the people, yeah, right. from the evil of the sneaky yeah. whisperer who whispers into the chest of the people, be they of the jinn or of the people. Alhamdulillah. I'd like to reach you all, my sister, my brother, in the greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. We thank God again and again for allowing us to come together to praise and glorify God and to seek His forgiveness and to repent to Him for He is the forgiver most merciful. This is what God tells us in the, in the revealed scripture that uh, no one can forgive sin but the Most High, and that we are committed to righteousness and the working of righteousness. That we Listen may to be the clip saved. Bar. Pay attention. Uh, <clears throat> I like to today read from Surah uh, the Statute Book, Surah 25. Um, as our theme continues, uh, we're just here to remind each other there's, no, there's nothing significant that we want to really convey to you, but to remind us as believers uh, what our responsibility is to our Lord. First, let us establish uh, a little reading so we can begin to focus. <coughs> In Al Fuquan, it says, Bismillah rahman rahim Most blessed is the one who revealed the statute book to his servant so he can serve as a warning to the whole world. The one to whom belongs all sovereignty of the heavens and the earth he never had a son, nor does he have any partners in sovereignty. He created everything in exact measure. He precisely designed everything. Yet they set up besides him gods who do not create anything. They themselves are created and who possess no power to even harm or benefit themselves, nor do they possess any power to control life or death or resurrection. So here, the revelations tell us who God is, shows us his power, and that we are not to set up idols beside God, that these idols that they have set up cannot do anything, Why? not even for themselves, which tells us that God is in control of every soul. God is in control of every soul on earth. And he tells us how the believers should behave. And this is what is our ongoing theme in, in, in our Jumas on Friday, that we just come we, we make our worship and we remind how we are to behave. Uh, one of the things that seem to uh, hinder us where God talks about what's more important is it the homes that we have the jobs that we have, our wives, our children, our friends, is that more important to us than striving in the course of God? So in, in saying that, God is telling us there is nothing more important. There is nothing more important than striving in his course. No friends, no relations. And so today, we, let's look at some of the relations that we have. 
God tells us that you know, we should be careful about our friendship, who we befriend. Because our friends will have a tendency to lead us astray. So he tells us to only ally ourselves with those who believe. Why? Because the believers will remind. The believers will encourage. The believers will exemplify what God decrees for us. And so we should ally ourselves with people who are striving uh, for the hereafter. This is what we should be doing. And, and again, this is a reminder. We know this, but sometimes um, we'll have relationships with people and they will distract us from the cause of God. And so, we are to make certain that, and, and this is in our everyday coming and going, not just people who come to Juma. We're talking about people who, who we work with, who we spend our six days a week with, people who we lay down with, people who uh, we may be seeking uh, involvement with. If we say we believe, then this is what we have to do. We have to examine. We have to examine who we're going to be with. Who we're going to spend our time with. It says that... Uh, in the in uh, Al Fuquan and why I chose this Kasura is because they have very interesting ayat. It has a very interesting ayat, and it says uh, in ayat uh, 20, uh, 27 It says, "The day will come." When the transgressors will bite their hands in anguish and say, Alas, I wish I had followed the path with the messenger. Alas, woe to me. I wish I did not take that person as a friend. He has led me away from the message that has come to me. Indeed, the devil lets down his human victims. So we have to see that. We have to understand that. We have to understand how important it is to us to remain together as believers. Because if we don't, whoever we're, we're allying ourselves with will eventually lead us astray. So these are, the, these are some of the reasons why God tells us that we should never turn our faces away from each other. Whether we have disagreement or not, because it's better for us to be together, because we have one thing in common, that we striving for the hereafter. Whether you like them or not, it's not important. God says, have you seen the one who God is his ego? Will he be your advocate? One of our one of our enemies is our ego. And what supports the ego? What's one thing that always supports the ego? Our opinion. So what supports? Anytime you you get uh, swelled up in the chest because you have something to say, you got an opinion. You gotta watch me. or how I feel. This is how I feel. This is what I know. We don't know anything. We have to rely on the guidance of God. That's what we have to do. That's what we have to cultivate. We have to wait. We have to pray. We have to pray on it. And then God will show us. We don't move on our opinion. 
the older we get, the more we realize, the more we see that, we understand that. This is what we have to do. I'd like to go to uh, Surah 58, and it tells us, it gives us some very good examples. Surah 58, Ayat 22, tells us, it says, You will find people who believe in God in the last day, befriending those. I'm sorry, let me get this. You will not find people who believe in God in the last day, befriending those who oppose God and his messenger, even if they were their parents, or their children, or their siblings or their tribe. For these, he decrees faith into their hearts and supports them with inspiration from him and admits them into gardens with flowing streams wherein they abide forever. God is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. These are the party of God. Most assuredly, God's party are the winners. So God is telling us that when we strive to be in the party of God, it doesn't matter whether we like them or not. It doesn't matter what race they are. It doesn't matter what gender they are. He says, it doesn't matter whether it's their children. Doesn't matter whether it's their parents, their siblings, their race. Well, they use tribe, but I'm, I want to use race because that's what's prevalent today. That's how we see it. Does it matter? We want to be in the party of God. When we choose our mates, this is how we want to choose them. We want them to be in the party of God, meaning that they too are striving for the hereafter. And that they will remind us, and they will support us, and they will encourage us to remember God in the last day. So at this time, I'd like for us to turn to our Lord, seeking his forgiveness, alhamdulillah, to believe. There is a way to examine those who claim to be the party of God. And when we find them, we should hold fast. When we find a community 
we should hold fast. Again, why I chose the statute book out of Kukorn is because of the ayats that support oh. our theme to remind us how we are to behave, how we are to move, how we are to think. What is the behavior of the believers? It says, the worshipers of the most gracious are those who tread the earth gently. And when the ignorant speak to them, they only utter peace. Now we're not reading this just, you know, as a passage in the Quran. We're reading it because this is what God expects us to cultivate within ourselves. And this is why every, every week we strive to remind, to keep repeating it, repeating it, so that uh, it becomes fixed in our minds. The worshipers of the most gracious are those who tread the earth gently. And when the ignorant speak to them, they only utter peace. So we can't fly off the handle every time somebody says something to us. We can't, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's out of ignorance, I was, uh, Muhammad, Brother Muhammad was over the house the other day, and he said, you know, sometimes he can tell when somebody is trying to challenge what he's saying or trying to show him up. He says he has some, he's, he's instinctively understands that. And when he does, he becomes quiet. He says, I'm going to give up to be your way. So he doesn't try to go back at them. Well, this, is a, this is a trait that the believer has. It says, in the privacy of the night, they meditate on their Lord, and they fall prostrate. And they say, our Lord, spare us the agony of hell. Its retribution is horrendous. So what we want to do is what we should be doing. We should be reminded at the end of our day that hell awaits those who disbelieve in our Lord, where God will not redeem the soul. That's the most important thing. So that the next day when we get up, in whatever our endeavors are, we want to make sure that we're keeping faith with our Lord. When they give, they are neither extravagant nor stingy, but they give in moderation. I know that every time I go to Christides, there's a lady that stands outside, and she can be tough to deal with. <laughs> you know, <laughs> some days you give, if, if you give her, she, she's happy. And days that you don't give her a shield, she may cuss you out. <laughs> you know. And so when you see her, I guess you should say, Alhamdulillah, if I haven't given any of my charities, you know, <laughs> I can give the sister my charity. But sometimes, you know, again, as as you know, human beings and we're weak, you know, we become resentful. You know, and somebody say, I've, I've already made up my mind going in. Not giving it. <laughs> Here she come again. And then I'll shop, and then when I go out, I'll have a different attitude. You know, it passes, but it still comes up. So I look at her sometimes <laughs> as a test, you know. And then there's times when I don't have it, I just tell her, you know, and, and sometimes I'm joyously saying, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to <laughs> you know. So, you know, these are the these are the things that God shows us our mindset as human beings. You know. So He tells us, um, 
We don't have to be extravagant. You know, but what we give, we don't we give with a certain attitude. We don't give, you know, resentfully. They never implore beside God any other God, nor do they kill any soul. But God has made life sacred, except in the course of justice. Nor do they commit adultery. Those who commit these offenses will have to pay. Now, adultery is a big, big issue because we have issues with marriage. We have issues with tradition. We have issues with the societal laws, uh, issues with money, issues with God. So we say we love people and we commit adultery with them, not realizing that we just set each other back in the eyes of God. And we don't want to have children out of wedlock. But if we read the previous scriptures about children out of wedlock, it's, it's, it's horrendous. Children out of wedlock don't prosper. We have to be careful. And when we say that they don't prosper, we're not talking about the worldly life. We're talking about our spiritual life. We have to cultivate a spiritual life for our children. Not a worldly life. School is going to do that. Exactly. TV is going to do that. Society is going to do that. It says, retribution is double for them on the day of resurrection, and they abide therein humiliated. So we can't do it up until we're dead. We can't do it. We have to rectify whatever our social lives are. We have to do that. So God says, exempt of those who repent, believe, and lead a righteous life. God transforms their sins into credit. God is forgiven, most merciful. Those who repent and lead a righteous life, God redeems them in complete redemption. There's a lot of things that we may dislike and, and have issues with. But the most important thing is that taking care of our family, our children, and you know how, how difficult that is our work. That is our responsibility. Up until a point. <laughs> Up until a point. And then the responsibility is on them. You've given what you can. And then you, you know, let go. You just remind and you support as best you can. That's so, all. He says that the traits of us is that. They don't bear false witness. When they encounter vain talk, they ignore it. We have to be able to do that. We have to be able to do that. When reminded of their Lord's revelation, they never react to them as if they were deaf and blind. And they say, our Lord, let our spouses and our children be a source of joy for us and keep us in the forefront of the righteous. That's what we want to do. Because if we believe, if we really truly believe and we believe that uh, we're going to meet God, if we truly believe that we're going to, we're, we have an opportunity to go to paradise. And, you know, all of this is kind of jumbled in our reality because we're in different stages of our reality. You know, some of us have no inclination to walk our mortality. You know, we just don't. You know, young people, they, they're going to live forever. And they should feel like that. That's what God instinctively puts in us. Children have a, a prolonged, imaginative, creative world. 
I remember because I self-indulged in it. I enjoyed it. I had fun. I really did. But then reality comes in. And you have to remove yourself from that mindset. Though you hold on to imagination, imagination is important. Because that is a way of seeing our Lord. We have to use the imagination. But not foolishly, not as children, as adults seeking a spiritual life. Still use our imagination. So, these things are important. It's important that we believe in the hereafter. That is not just somebody's imagination that is given to us so that we can do good. No. God says, you're going to see me for certain. I'm going to resurrect you for certain. And either you're going to go to heaven, a paradise, or you're going to go to hell. Now, the older uh, the, of us, the elders of us, that inclination is greater because we feel our mortality. We realize there's a certain sense of time. So it doesn't become just some imaginative place. We're holding on to that hard. We said, hold on to the rope. <laughs> We're holding that rope. And as time progresses and we cultivate things in our children, they too will start to hold the rope. That's what we hope for. They too will begin to hold the rope. It says, these are the ones who attain paradise in return for their steadfastness. They receive therein with joyous greetings and peace. Eternally they abide therein. What a beautiful oh. destiny. Thank you. What a beautiful abode. Mm. Say, you attain value at my Lord only through your worship. So we have to worship God. We, we, we've gone through what worship means. It's not just salah. Worship is, is praising God. When something good happens to us, we should praise God. Openly and privately, we should praise God. And he said that we can do that, you know, on small scales, like eating and drinking and things like that, where we can remember Everything is from God, and that way we get to cultivate praise in God. So he says, you, you attain value at my Lord only through your worship. But if you disbelieve, you incur the inevitable consequence. So, if we're believing, alhamdulillah. If we're not believing, it's to our own detriment. God guide us. Allah is coming to say. Allahu Akbar, 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 Allahu Akbar,